Now to the college platform where both Arizona and Arizona State are without athletic directors as we speak. The Wildcats last week said see you later to Dave Hickey. Of course, Ray Anderson left ASU back in November. Both are rudderless right now in the position of leadership, and that's not a good thing. The Wildcats, of course, losing their head football coach after winning 10 games in a bowl game. Jed Fish moves on. And so the new man, the new boss is Brent Brennan. Comes from San Jose State. But before that, in his journey, Dick Tomey was a big part of it. Jordan Ham, one-on-one with the new head football coach at the University of Arizona. We've seen so much over the past couple of weeks of will a player be entering the transfer, transfer portal? Will they be returning? Um, for the most part, it seems like a lot of these guys want to stay in Tucson. They want to be coached by you. That has It has a lot to do with you, but also, I think, the roster and the people that are on that roster. Why do you think so many of these players are, are staying and wanting to play for the Wildcats? I, I think it's a combination of their commitment to each other. You know, I think they feel like, you know, they've come a long way together. They've been through, you know, forged by the fire, so to speak, and, you know, experienced some great success last year. And that was an incredibly galvanizing experience for them. And then I also think the city of Tucson has a, you know, a way of embracing student athletes here, embracing, you know, the campus sports community. And I think, you know, those two things coming together, um, you know, they're, they're the, kind of the intense love for this team has for each other. And then when you combine that with how the city feels about them and how they've responded to them making the decision to stay, I think that's been, you know, a, a really positive when, when they, and they can feel good about the decision. Now, so many playmakers have announced that they are coming back, but uh, I know leading the charge is Noah Fafita and Tedaroa McMillan. They had that announcement at the basketball game at McHale. Uh, you know, U of A fans have said that they're they're going to remember that for the rest of their life. What was your first conversation like with Noah and with T-Mac? You know, it was funny. I, uh, you know, I, I had a brief team meeting and, uh, you know, really I started with the team, you know, from the trying to have some understanding of what they were going through. And I felt like I was maybe uniquely prepared for it. Cause I had just gone through it with my own team the same day. Right. So I had just met with my team, uh, 10 AM, thir- uh, whatever Tuesday morning and to, and talked about taking the job here. And it was a really an emotional thing for me and for the team. And, and so I was really feeling that. And, you know, then three or four hours later, I'm in front of this new team. And so I kind of just talked to them about, you know, I understand. I understand it's a hard circumstance. It's a hard situation. Uh, you know, I told them, I know, I know you don't know me and, and I don't know you. And, uh, you know, and trust is earned over time. And and so I don't expect them to trust me right away. Um, but, you know, if they would give me a chance, I would I would do everything I could to earn that trust over our time together. You know, Noah came and found me. My wife was talking to him. And uh, he he had come to talk to me. And so my wife brought him over. I sat down and talked to just he and I face to face for about, I'd say probably a half hour. And, uh, you know, and it was really centered on us getting to know each other and, and really me asking him how I could best get to know some of the guys on the team. And so we had a, uh, we just got together as a group. I I asked him if he would kind of gather guys that he considered leaders and important people on the team, uh, you know, and if they would have a conversation with me the next day. And so that's what we did. We sat in my office for about an hour and a half, two hours. And I just, they kind of peppered me with questions and, you know, I shot questions back and it was just kind of a, you know, a, you know, an introduction. And it was, it was, uh, it was fun and it was friendly and it was just a really cool moment trying to get to know each other. And, uh, and then at the end of it, we decided to do it the next day again. And so that was kind of the, where we, we started, you know, trying to get to know each other a little bit better and, and, and hopefully give them an idea what, who I was and what I was all about what kind of program I I want to build. Um, You know, I talked so much about like the good stuff that was done here by Jed and the previous staff, right? Like that, you know, they did a great job. They recruited a bunch of good players who are really good kids. They did an incredible job, you know, really upgrading the facility here. And and so there's so many good things. And so, you know, and and no one, I talked about that open and honestly. I know that coach Tomey had a huge influence on you as you were coming up. Um, And there are plenty of Tomey isms, but one that, has stuck out with me that I've heard you talk about is feedback is the breakfast of champions. Uh, Can can you take me through the importance of, of feedback, not only for the players, not only for your other coaches, but for yourself in, in building this program? Well, you know, I I think the cool thing is when you're a head coach, you know, you know, you know, you're never short on other people's opinions, right? People always have something to say. 
but I think feedback is good. And it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. If people are speaking from the heart, it doesn't really bother me. And we, you know, learning that through coach Tommy, coach Tommy would talk a lot about the feedback he would get from his wife, Nancy, you know, and like the, like her feedback was helping him be a better husband or a better man or, or a better coach. And, and I think, um, I've really taken that into when I became a head coach because there's no manual on how to do this job. Like I, I don't think college football in general does a great job of preparing you for that moment when you become a head coach. Uh, there's just like, it, it's so much different than being an assistant coach. And um, you know, you go from managing, you know, five, 10, 15 players to managing you know, 110 players and also managing 40 or 50 adults. And it's just a way different uh, situation you're in all of a sudden. And so, you you know, when I first got started, I needed feedback from the players I was coaching, from the coaches I was coaching, from the administrators I was working with, because I was learning on the fly. And I needed to know when I messed something up, or I needed to know when I didn't do a good job with something with the team. And I needed players to tell me that. And I've empowered, you know, the guys that are going to work with us here, our administration and the team, like, hey, you got to tell me. If I don't know, I can't fix things. And so that feedback is the breakfast of champions because if we know where we're at, then we, we can know where we're going. You've also spoken about being vulnerable as a coach and, and you know, letting players in. And you know, a lot of times football coaches might be viewed as just the the toughest nails and the, you know, the really high standards. But you know, how does being vulnerable as a coach help you and, and help build a bond between you and your players? Well, I think it's, I think for any coach, it's important that you are yourself, you know, and I think, you know, sometimes people in general just hide parts of themselves for whatever reason. But, um, you know, I, I think vulnerability is an important skill. And, and when you can get on a personal level, you know, on a deep level with people, right, you have a chance for that relationship, that bond to get stronger. And we're going to do a lot of stuff as a team where we, we put ourselves in situations where we talk about real things and we share real life experiences and we find out that you have common ground with another teammate and that helps build that deep in that bond. And I think, you know, the better we know each other, right, the more compelled we are to put in the work and do the things that are required to be successful in this game. And, you know, just in the simplest terms, you know, the more connected we are, the more, commi the more committed we become. And that, that's what I'm trying to build is an incredibly connected football team here. And the awesome thing is that the previous staff, Coach Fish and, and the rest of those guys, they built that already. There's already an extremely connected football team here. As you're building your coaching staff, seems like you, you've made a lot of progress this past week. Um, some coaches coming from San Jose State, some former U of A Wildcats coming back. Uh, other familiar faces like Danny Gonzalez joining the staff. Uh, but what's the common thread of these coaches, the common attributes that you were looking for as you were building this staff? These guys have to be great communicators and they need to sincerely care about the young men we're, we're charged with. I think that's just such an important thing. The football is the football, right? Like we have to be competent. We have to know what we're doing with good schemes and good practice and, and all the right things there. But um, it, it's really important to me that, that coaching the coaches that, that work with us are in alignment with me in, in the, in the mindset that we are going to take care of the people that are playing for us. Cause when those parents trust us with their kids they're trusting us with their most prized possession, you know, and it's now, and now it's our responsibility. So yeah, we're going to push them and coach them and, and all those things. Right. But we're really going to start with caring about them. And, you know, that's something that we've, we've talked about a bunch, you know, that was definitely something that was a huge part of coach Tommy. Um, and, and I think that that's another thing that, you know, the more we care, the more connected we get. Right. And it's not just the football. It's like, how are we doing in school? How's your personal life? How's your social life? How's your experience here at the University of Arizona? And it's the, all parts of that being on stable, solid ground also contributes to better football. The Brennan era is here in Tucson. Thanks so much for the time, coach. I know it's been a crazy couple of weeks for you. I appreciate you sitting down with us. Hey, it's been awesome. It's been a magical week and a half and I, I can't wait for what's next.